variables. And we have a few examples of L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule. Okay, here we go. Um, we're going to take a couple cases. Now, the, uh, the first case we started, we said that the most basic case, so the most basic, most basic case is we have a 0 over 0. But it also applies to infinity, uh, plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. It also applies to things like um, like 0 to the 0 and 1, 1 raised to the, um, I always have to look at that, 1 to the infinity, which doesn't really make sense. So, so I wanted, yeah, that's it. So here we go. We're going to try some of these. So here's our first example. Our first example is we're going to say, oh, whoops. Our first example is the limit as x approaches 0 of the cosine of x over x. Now, notice that at 0, we get cosine of 0. Well, that's 1 over x at 0. That's just 0. Notice that this doesn't fit any of our any of these uh, patterns up here. So I threw that in kind of as just to show you that L'Hopital's rule doesn't solve all problems. It solves problems of these forms of these forms up here. So in this case, um, this is it does not apply. So we'll put D and A it does not apply. Okay. The second one we're going to try is we're going to find the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x over x squared. Now notice that right now, if I'm not, it, this it becomes e to the infinity, that's infinity, and x squared, that's infinity. And you could say, you might be tempted to say, well, is that just one? But no, because... The numbers are different. E to the x is much at, at even at 100 is much different than x 100 squared. So let's let's try L'Hopital's rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as x goes to infinity, and then I'll just we'll write it this time. We're going to take the derivative with respect to x of e to the x over the derivative with respect to x of x squared. So this is going to be the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of e to the x, that's e to the x, and the derivative of x squared, that's 2x. Now notice that this is still infinity over infinity. So what do we do? We apply it again. So let's, uh, we'll do that again. Apply you can do it as many times as you need to, if, as long as it meets the forms. So apply L'Hopital's rule. Again. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to come over here. So this becomes, I'm going to just take the derivative this time. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of e to the x is e to the x over the derivative of 2x, well, that's just 2. Well, now, when we take this, what do we get? We have e to the infinity over 2, so we say that our limit is, in fact, infinity. And some people would say, don't put an equal. You could use an arrow. Um, you can ask your teacher what notation they prefer, but this will work. All right, uh, another example. Let's try, let's try something that gets more involved. So we've, to do this, I'm going to come down. We're going to need a clean screen for this one. So let's try the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x power. Well, if you recall, this is actually the formula or the limit that gave us 
e. But we want to see how in the world that's going to give us e. Well, um, notice right now that 1 over infinity is 0, so this is going to be 1 plus 0. So I'm going to have 1 inside the parentheses, and then, oops, that's a funny one, I have a 1 inside of the parentheses, and then I'm going to have raised to the x, which is infinity, so I have 1 to the infinity. That's kind of a strange number. So here's what we can do. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this. Let, you have to be a little creative. Let y equal 1, whoops, in parentheses here, uh, 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x. Okay, um, now we still got that exponent, so let's take a log, and then we can apply, apply properties of logs. So let's say the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of all of this, 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x. But property of logarithms is you can move the exponent in front. So let's take the natural log of y is equal to x times the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. And so then we're going to take the limit. Let's take the limit of both sides. So I'm going to write this over here. So we're going to write the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of, of x times the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. Now notice that right now, what kind of a form do we have? We have an infinity, and then the natural log of 1 is just 0. So that's another case that I, I should have added. It, this still is just a number that doesn't make sense. So what do we do? Well, remember, if we can get it into either like in 0 over 0, in infinity over infinity, what we can do is I'm going to write this this way. The natural log, oops, I'm sorry, the limit as x approaches infinity. And I'm going to write the x as a 1 over 1 over x. So let's do this. This is the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x over 1 over x. I know that's a crazy fraction, but if you flip and multiply the denominator, you'll end up, you'll end up right back up there. So it's, it's kind of an insightful or clever strategy, but look at what it does. We said that if you put in infinity now, now we have the natural log of 1, which is 0, and as x goes to infinity in the denominator, that's going to 0. So now, now, because of this, now we can apply the Opital's rule. Now apply. L'Hopital rule. All right, let's do that. So this becomes, I take the limit, so I have the limit here as x approaches infinity. Now the derivative of the numerator, remember the derivative of the natural log is 1 over 1 plus 1 over x times and then the chain rule says we have to take the derivative of the parentheses. Well, the derivative of 1 is 0. Uh, I'll write that out. So then we still have to take the derivative with respect to x of the 1 plus 1 over x. All of that is going to be over the derivative with respect to x of 1 over x. Okay. This is going to give me the limit as x approaches 0, this is going to be 1 over 1 plus 1 over x times the derivative of this next piece in the numerator. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of 1 over x becomes minus 1 over x squared over, and that's the same in the denominator, minus 1 over x squared. So, oh, look at that. Those are going to cancel. I love when things cancel. So this becomes the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over, I'm sorry, infinity. Well, there should be infinity there, too. 
of 1 plus 1 over x. Well now, as x goes to infinity, this term here, this term here, that just becomes, this goes to 0. And so, now we can't lose track of what we did. And that is this. Remember, we had this limit of on the left-hand side as well. So let's bring that down and bring the whole screen up. So I've got the, the uh, limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of y is equal to 1. Now, in order to get y by itself, we remember that's what the whole problem was, is y was our original argument. So I'm going to raise both sides to the e. So this gives me the limit as x approaches infinity of y equals e to the first power, but that's just e. Isn't that great? That's exactly what we expected. Okay, we have one more to do, one more. Uh, let's try this one. Let's try the limit as, I'm going to move this up again, the limit as x approaches 0 of x raised to the x power. So uh, again, let's, let's use the same procedure. Let's let, let y equal x raised to the x. So then we can say that the natural log of y is equal to uh, the natural log of x raised to the x. Now we apply our logarithm properties. So the natural log of y is x times the natural log of x. And then, then we take the limit. So now let's take the limit of both sides as x approaches 0 of the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x times the natural log of x. Now notice that this is of the form 0 times, and the natural log of 0, well, you could say this is 0 maybe from the negative side, but this is um, a negative infinity. So again, we have this, um, the limit is negative infinity. We have this odd piece happening here. So what we can do is this. Let's write this as the limit as x approaches 0 of the natural log of x over 1 over x. Then we take the derivatives. So this is the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x over uh, minus 1 over x squared. Minus 1 over x squared. Well, this is just going to be, this is going to just give me, um, oh, when we, we flip and we multiply all this, this is the limit. Notice I can, mul this is the limit as x approaches 0 of minus x. Because remember this, we can flip and multiply. I'm going to write this step out again just so we can see. So now I'm at the limit. So I'll write the left-hand side. The limit as x approaches 0 of the natural log of y equals the limit as x approaches 0 of this becomes a 1 over x times um, a minus 1 over x squared. The denominator fraction gets flipped and multiplied. And so this just gives me the limit as x approaches 0 of the natural log of y is equal to, this all simplifies just to a, the, oops, need my limit in there, the limit x approaches 0 of negative x. Well, that's just 0. If I raise both sides to the power of e, then that would give me that the limit as x goes to 0 of y, remember y was our x to the x, is equal to e raised to the 0, but that's 1. And that is how we some cases of how we can apply L'Hopital's rule. I hope that helps, and thanks for